this week as I was, you know, doing praying and studying about what to share. Uh, when I retired, a minister friend of mine gave me a, a book. And uh, it's not a devotional, but it's got some thoughts and things in there. And, and as I was reading it, it's by Rick Warren this week. It really spoke to me. Uh, and I, I hope and I think it will speak to you. So I'm just letting you know that the resource uh, for this message really has come from Rick Warren's book, uh, Energizing. And so I, I hope it will help. It, it, I'm, it, I'm entitled uh, How to Handle Stress. I think that we're all aware that there's just a lot of stress of what's going on right now, not just the coronavirus, but other things in our lives. And you, you see it and you hear it on TV, you hear people that are upset. I know our son and son-in-law still have their jobs and they said, my goodness, at work, it's just unreal. I mean, how people are just on extremes of this thing one way or another, on each other's nerves, uh, you know, saying dumb things, doing things. It, it's just so I know that there's a lot of issues about stress. Um, and in Matthew, my text is Matthew 11. <clears throat> if I were in the building, I would ask you to hold up your Bibles if you have your Bibles, but I hope you still bring them to the Zoom. I'd like to read for you Matthew 11, 28 and 29, familiar passage to all of us. Jesus is speaking here. I see it. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I see some Bibles and hands waving. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, stress can cause all kinds of even health problems. Uh, when you get on and check this out, you know, and I've done some research, and I'm sure you're aware. It can cause depression, anxiety, uh, personality disorders, heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke. Uh, it can even affect your behavior. They say it even can cause diabetes and obesity. Uh, it's just uh, emotional stress. And, and the definition for stress is, of course, feeling of emotional and physical tension. Uh, and it can make you uh, frustrated. <laughs> angry or nervous. And so uh, dealing with that, I think is important for us. And probably in one way or another, we're all kind of feeling stress these days. Uh, excitement about getting in the new building and all the stuff that needs to be done. You know, when I listen to Ken and Art and we talk or in the elders, I mean, there's just so much to do. And and I know we're all excited, you know, and that almost brings a stress on because, oh, man, how can we get this done? And we got to get this done. We want to get in there and yet we can't get in there. And so much to do. It can be overwhelming. Uh, but, you know, also, uh, you know, here it comes stress, stress, plus dealing with this coronavirus and how that's affecting us, friends, family, neighbors, community, nation. Uh, so this message, I believe, is important for us. But I want you to know up front, it's difficult to accomplish to deal with stress. And I'll share some points with you on that. Uh, number one is, and how to handle stress, is to come to Christ. Uh, our scripture says, and I want to kind of dissect this a little bit, is take, take my yoke, he says. Take my yoke upon you. Now, I know we've seen shows and stories even in, you know, Bible times about oxen uh, and they're yoked together. And of course, that's generally, you know, in there, that's kind of like for almost a hardship because they have to pull a heavy load and they're connected together. But if scripture says that hit Jesus' yoke is easy, it's a different kind of yoke. Uh, and, and the reason is because in the scripture, it says because he's gentle and he's humble. So his yoke is easy. It's a different kind of yoke. Uh, and we're to have the same kind of spirit, the Bible tells us, that Jesus, we're to have the mind of Christ. So our yoke with Christ is supposed to be a gentle and a humble kind of attitude of relating not only with him, but with each other. And so we don't have to be afraid of Christ's yoke. His yoke is easy. easy. The word is uh, Christos, which means it's easy, pleasant, and nothing to hurt us. 
and this yoke of his. And then he goes on to say, and my burden is light. <laughs> my burden is light. Christ, by his spirit, comforts us and aids us in this journey. And when we're under stress and all our struggles, uh, he also says that he's meek and lowly. So when he starts talking about my yoke and my burden, he's saying, when you're hooked up with me, when you're connected with me, it's not a hardship. It's not a difficulty. It's an easy burden because we're connected with him and he's gentle and he's humble. And he wants us to be that way as we deal with each other in these stressful times. We have to be careful we don't allow stress to get us angry, overly frustrated, say things we shouldn't, get too tense. Uh, you know, and, and that's one of my concerns, not a fear, but a concern. And I've talked to other pastors across the country, and they say the same thing. You know, there is a tendency uh, that the devil could use this thing to divide the church on different opinions of it, how to handle it, what to do, uh, even with wanting to get in the building. And so we have to be careful, church. Uh, I'm trying to help us. I hope you're getting that. We have to be careful we don't allow the stress uh, to cause us to react in ways we shouldn't. And remember that that Christ's yoke and burden is easy, it's light, it's gentle. Uh, he's meek and lowly, it says in heart. And, and then he says, but we're to learn, we're to learn, to learn of him. It says that humble in heart and learn of me. Burden's easy and it's light. And so we do that when we sit at his feet and his word and let our pride go. So Jesus is saying, basically, when he's talking about this burden is light, and his yoke is light, it's easy, it's not hard. When we're harnessed to him, then we find a way to handle these things in a, in a Christian manner. Now, first of all, when we come to salvation, I think most of the time we always think of it as forgiveness of sins. And we don't often think of it as rest for our souls. But he's saying in the scripture, you'll find rest for your soul. So that your soul is not in consternation all the time. And, you know, uh, I started out with this a couple of weeks ago, hope, and then peace, and now uh, dealing with stress in our lives. And so the question I would ask you to think about this morning is, what do you do when you're stressed? What do you do? Uh, who do you go to when you're stressed out? What do you do about it? Uh, who do you go to when you're stressed out? Uh, makes a difference who you go to and what you do. Because Jesus offers spiritual rest, emotional rest, and mental rest. You see, our, our problem isn't overworked muscles. Uh, if you're like me, and I think maybe you might be like me a little bit, our problem is overworked minds. <laughs> Our minds are just, oh, yeah, I see some noddings of heads. I don't know if there's any hand waving to thumbs up, but it's an overworked mind that, you, yeah, just doesn't, doesn't rest sometime. And look at, listen to this scripture out of the Message Bible. This is awesome. Now, remember I said it's kind of difficult maybe to, to, to do this. But listen to Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 out of the Message Bible. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Now here it comes, endless energy. Hmm. Uh, and if you need endless energy, <laughs> boundless strength. All this energy issues from Christ. Come to Christ, that's the first step in handling stress. Come to Jesus, that's where you need to go. That's where we need to take the issues with. And secondly, how do you handle stress? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Give up control. Ooh, there it is. Give up control. Uh, what is control? Definition says it's a position of one who wants to make decisions and rule. See, the reason many of us get so overwhelmed is because we try to control too many things in our life. We act like it all depends on us. You know, sometimes we think that, boy, it wasn't for me, you know. Everything will fall apart. I have some good news for you. You can let everything go and the world's still going to go on. <laughs> but sometimes we think, boy, it all depends on me to do this or all depends on us to do this. 
and, and, and here's what Rick Warren, he said, the greater the need to control the things, the more, the more stressed you're going to be. If you want to lower the stress in your life, you'll have to give up control. Uh, last week, Liz sang a song, and you know, it's amazing. Every week, somebody sings a song that goes with my message. Liz's last week, and even today, all the songs were great, but Marty's goes along with this too in one point. And so I said, Liz, you know, send me this. So I just want to read some of the words of her song talking about relieving stress, go to Christ, give up control. The title of her song was Still. Here it comes. This is awesome. I believe that you were God alone, but sometimes I still try to take control because I get scared when I don't see the end. And all you want from me is let it go. You're parting the waters. You're making a way for me. You're moving mountains that I don't even see. You're, you've answered my prayer before I even speak. And all you need from me is to be still, Marty. <laughs> that was part of your song. I bring my praise before I bring my need. Because there's no fear. You've not already seen. I rest my heart on all your promises. Because I have seen hmm, and know your faithfulness. You're parting waters, making a way for me. You're moving mountains that I don't even see. You're, you've answered my prayer before I even speak. And all you need from me to be still and know that you are God. Be still that you know trust. <laughs> thought that was cool. I loved that song last week, and I thought it went along with this as well about control. See, we, we, we just sometimes think we, we've got to, to handle the situation, and when we can't, when we can't, uh, it frustrates us. And then it causes reaction from the frustrating. And that's, that, you know, that song and what the scripture is teaching, that's what it means to surrender and be yoked with Jesus, is to be still and let it go. He'll, he'll make the load lighter because he comes alongside of us. Now, the third point is this, and the truth is, you. well, this isn't the third point. I'm going to digress before I get to The truth is this, you probably don't have one problem in your life right now. You probably got a dozen. <laughs> Finances, health, family, job, future concerns, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the answer is not a vacation, but a surrender and control to Christ. Now, here's the third point. And Jesus was saying this in the scripture, learn, learn from him, learn to trust. Jesus said, learn from me. But learning is a process. It's not an easy thing. It takes time. You know, when we get stressed and, and get in certain frames of mind or actions or reactions, it just didn't happen overnight. You know. Things build up in us. That's how it works. You know, it just builds up and builds up in us and our lives. And, and we've allowed all this to accumulate. So it doesn't happen overnight just to get stressed. Well, here's the truth. <laughs> you don't get over it in a day either. That's why he said learn. It's a process, learning how to handle and deal with stress. Sometimes we have to learn, unlearn bad habits that are developed over time. And one of the reasons that we get stressed out is that we don't wait. We don't wait. And we're, we're not, and boy, I have to say, ouch here, here it comes. We're not patient. Anybody out there not too patient? I wish I could see all your faces because I know I got a few thumbs up and a few grins and nods. And there may be more out there. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that has that issue. But a lot of our stress comes from pride, thinking, that we can do it all. We don't need anybody. But that's a lie from the devil. We need each other. Jesus created us to be together, the body of Christ, connect. That's why scripture says, you know, don't forsake the assembling yourselves, because uh, we need each other. We need that touch. I remember at first years in ministry, uh, everything I heard for years from great educators and ministers was, you know, the handshake, the touch was so important, that connectedness with people. And I think that's why a lot of people are stressed and lonely. They can't touch, they can't connect, and they feel isolated. And then that brings on stress in their lives. And so 
you know, we, we need each other. Uh, and here's Jesus' secret. Here's Jesus' secret. He says 12 times in the book of John, these are the words he used. I only do what my father tells me. I only say what my father tells me to say. I only act when my father tells me to act. And I only respond when my father tells me to respond. I think maybe that if we all listen to that one, We'd save ourselves a little trouble, don't you think? A little grief in how we deal with ourselves, our family, our friends, maybe even in the church. Proverbs 20, 24 says this, since the Lord is directing our steps, <clears throat> why try to understand everything that happens along the way? If we really believe and trust the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, why do we try to figure it all out? You understand, folks, there's some things we can't figure out. There's no answer for some things, that's a trust. That's why we trust God in what's going on with the coronavirus. We trust God with getting our building. We trust God with our finances. It may not look good. We may not understand it. It may be difficult. But Christians, the, the, what we have that non-Christians don't have, we trust our God. We believe him. We believe he has our life in his hands, and we can trust him. So maybe today you're saying, yes, pastor, I'm in a stressful time in my life. The problem is, <clears throat> when we get stressed, we tend to look for things to release the pressure. Maybe it's a hobby. Uh, maybe it's sports. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's food. Maybe it's TV. I know over the years of pastoring, I've seen people all kinds of ways. I've seen ladies to, to, to help with the stress. They go buy stuff. Go buy a purse or shoes. Uh, I know people to relieve their stress. Some like, you know, go to, go to the table, eat the food. Well, that doesn't produce a well result sometimes, eating too much food, uh, you know, or maybe it's, uh, you know, exercise or TV, uh, it can be anything. Sometimes people try to reduce and relieve their stress by sex, drugs, alcohol. The problem with all these things, they're only temporary. They don't offer and provide the rest that only God can give us. You see, God created us to need him. We need him. That's why we have to be saved, because there's a void in our heart when there's sin and we're not connected to Christ. And the only way to fill the void is to accept Jesus. And so he's created us that we need him in our situation to, to rest and to have the strength we need. So what's weighing, what's weighing you down? Is it a problem? Is it a conflict? Here's what you can do. Get alone with God. Slow down, de-stress. You see, when we get alone with God and, and tell him what's going on and wait on him, he might tell us something we didn't expect. If you ever had this happen, I have. All these things on your mind, distress, concern, problems, anxiety, whatever. And you get alone with God and you pray, and you think and you meditate and somehow then God says, well, maybe you're looking at this wrong. Maybe you're not thinking right about this problem. Maybe you're some of the problem. Maybe I have to direct or redirect your thinking and your perspective. You see, when you get alone with God, you need to tell him what's going on. He already knows what he wants you to tell him. And we pray and that's proper. But we also need to say, God, but is there anything in me? Do I need to see something? Do I need to know something different? Uh, and he'll guide us to the real issue, what, what's most important. He'll help us to understand that and prioritize that. Help you see yourself, maybe how to change your perspective. And remember this, when I close with this thought, remember this. God is for you. God wants you to succeed. He's that kind of God. I want to pray for you again. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for folks that write good books and devotions that help us sometimes on our journey. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help your people right now, your children, your church, the body of Christ. Someone stressed, and I'm sure many are, that you'll help us to, to deal through this process, to get alone with you, go to God, take it to you, and learn how to give up control and trust you, to relax in you, and to learn 
learn how to handle this stress. Get alone with you and pray and just see what you're saying. Because you're the one that can help us ultimately to have hope, peace, joy, and rest in our souls. God bless your people, Lord. Help them today. Encourage them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Woohoo! Praise the Lord.